Hey, welcome everybody. It's Chris and thanks for coming by. We're going to do some fun, interesting figure painting today. This is a painting of a lighthouse keeper. This is someone that um, lives usually at a lighthouse. They maintain it. They make sure that everything runs correctly for the lighthouse. This keeps all the ships and um, people that are out in boats and ships out at sea along the coast safe with the lighthouse. So we're just kind of making a little tribute here to those people that uh, keep and maintain lighthouses along our coasts, along all of the world's coasts. And um, that's my uh, tribute here. And this is a beautiful watercolor painting of a lighthouse keeper. So we did this in watercolor. We do the pencil sketch. We explain how you're going to scale everything so that you have um, proper uh, um, proportions on your figure. So we use the head as our main scaling um, uh, feature to scale the rest of the body from the head, the size of the head. And that's pretty much how we did this. So I explained everything A to Z, the whole enchilada, chock full of nuts information here on my channel on watercolor. I know you're going to enjoy this and give this a try. Even if you don't paint water, uh, watercolor figures too much, don't worry about it. Just give it a shot. Give it a try. Even if it comes out, you know, halfway okay or even a little bit lousy, no big deal. Every time you try something new, that's one more uh, time you've practiced that um, new bit of information, whether it's a figure, something you haven't tried before, flowers or a boat or a seascape or a landscape, whatever it is, give it a shot. Keep practicing all the different subject matter that you can uh, that's possible. And this way you get familiar with it because when you try it out and you give it a shot, you're going to get more familiar with it. And then that'll be more, uh, you know, it's going to be to your advantage because the next time you try it it's going to be a little bit easier and then each time after that a little bit easier a little bit easier and then eventually you, you've got it you'll be doing it you know successfully and you, you, you won't believe it you'll be like I can't believe I'm doing these figure paintings so well and it's only because you just gave it a shot you tried it out you made a lot of mistakes in the beginning but then after a while you get used to it you figure out those different things you have to the basics that you have to do to make it look halfway good halfway decent and you just keep working from there. Trust me, give this one a try. If you want to make it a little smaller, and maybe just do from the waist up. So maybe you just do the waist and the head, waistline, the belt line of this figure. Or if you want to, you can do the full figure from the head all the way down to the legs and the hands. And we have a gorgeous scene here. Hope you'll try it out. This is one of my favorite paintings I've done recently. I really enjoyed this tremendously. I hope you'll try it out too. And we'll get started in just a second, okay? So. Stick with me here on this channel. You're going to have a lot of fun. It's all about watercolors. Every week we're practicing watercolors. The methods and techniques stay the same every video each week, although the subject matter does change. But the techniques and methods always stay the same. So if you're just watching every week, you're going to learn and keep growing. And remember, repetition is the mother of skill. So the more you repeat something over and over and over again, that makes you skillful at what you're repeating over and over and therefore you will have success at whatever it is you are working at and repeating on a consistent basis and that's basically the you know the basics of it okay so we're gonna be right back and we'll start our sketch and show you how to lay out and design everything here with pencil first and scaling everything and then we're gonna start our painting okay okay we'll be right back All right, so we are uh, getting started with our pencil drawing. We just saw the finished uh, painting. And we're, you know, this is just a really fun, again, a real fun um, painting to do. It's a figure painting. Um, and um, let's get started. We always uh, try to refer back to our previous notes. So just recently we did a video of some paintings along a coastal scene. And we basically said that um, for just for basic reference, usually the human form is approximately 7.5 or 8 head, head lengths high. So if you take that formula and you say from the tippy top of the head of the figure, human form, to the bottom of the feet, it's approximately 7.5 or 8 head lengths. So if you just take the figure and say, okay, here's one head length here, then you just go right down and 
if you take each head and just take that and go right on down, you're going to have about seven and a half to eight head lengths to the bottom of the feet of your of your figure. So when you're drawing figures, that's a, just a good rule of thumb that you're going to use when you're uh, setting up your um, your scale of your figure. So if you have a figure in front of you, all you have to do really is just um, get the uh, head length by just using you know your pencil. You hold your pencil out in front of you like this, straight out in front of you with your arm straight, your elbow locked straight. And then you just hold your pencil out and then you figure out you, with your thumb from the top of the pencil down to the chin and you hold your, your thumb right at the bottom of the pencil and then you get your head, head length using the, the tip of your pencil like so or pen. And if that's one head length there that you're looking at when you're, let's say if you're seated and you're looking at a figure standing in front of you. So if you find out that first head length like that, then all you have to do is draw your first so you would just draw your first, let's take a fresh piece of paper. Let's see if I have some paper here. Excuse me one second while I find some paper. Here we go. So all you would do is, whatever size your paper is that you're working on, you might be working on a really large, uh, on a large piece of like full watercolor paper, maybe like a 24 by 36 inch sheet of paper, or maybe you're working on maybe like an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, watercolor paper, all you do is you just say, okay, I'm going to start off and just put my first head length in my picture, like so, and then I know that from this point here, this head length, it's going to be eight head lengths down to the bottom of the feet. So you would just take that, let's say you would take that measurement, like so, and then you would say, okay, this is one head length there with the tip of your pencil and you slide it down until it comes to the tip of the pencil and your finger and then you make your make a mark right there and you say okay there's where my tip of my finger is and that will be a second head length then you would just do the same thing go up one head length is there slide on down third head length there and it's approximate right and then you have it and you can just keep going on down let's say you're you're drawing this figure maybe the figure is not going to be uh, all the way to the bottom of the feet. You might just only have the arms and the waist and a little bit of the legs. So you just keep tracing it down, one head length, two, three, four, and then you might only have four head lengths. And then you would just follow the picture according to that. And that's really as simple as that, as it is. And then, you know, so you're basically just scaling it down onto your paper. So if you hold up your pencil in front of you, and you look at the figure in front of you that you're look, you know, that you're working from, or if it's a picture or whatever you have to do, or you can even measure it too. You can go and you can use a picture from a photograph. Let's say I have a picture of a photograph in front of me, in front of me right here. I could take my ruler and say, okay, let me take my ruler and measure the head in that photograph. And let me take a look and see how, how big the head is in the photograph. And I could say, oh, okay, that head is approximately uh, two uh, centimeters or uh, 1.5 centimeters. Let me let me take a better look at this here. Let me see what that is. Okay, two uh, about mm, yeah about two centimeters. So if the head head is two centimeters across from me in that photograph, and I have my picture here, and I just start my head here, and you say okay, I'm going to make my head that big. Then you just have to take this and say okay, in my picture it's two centimeters. What's it here? Here it's four centimeters. So then you just gotta go four centimeters and that's your next head length. And I'll do it in a darker um, pencil here. Maybe I'll use a Sharpie, here we go. So you would just scale it and say, okay, in my drawing here, it's four centimeters that I drew my first head length like that in my picture. So now I just have to go down four centimeters every time to get my head lengths like that. One, two, here's another four centimeters head length four centimeters head length. Then you can look across from me and say, okay, in my picture, uh, his waist is uh, six centimeters. So if his head is two centimeters in that picture across from me, three head lengths would be his waist. And that's about it. One, two, and three. And that's his waist, right around where we put his jacket and his waist. Like that.
and his legs. So that's an approximate scale you can use. So you're just basically whatever uh, your you can use your picture that you're using, your photograph, your artwork. You might be working from a um, art book. You might be working from real life. You might be looking at someone in real life that's uh, maybe standing. You may be in a park doing a drawing and you're looking at someone standing in the park just maybe looking at some sights and you say, oh, let me draw that figure here in my, in my painting. So you would just say, okay, let me start with my first head length. And then you would just say, okay, I know that one, he one head length here is three centimeters. And now to get down to the waist, it's one, two, three, four. One, two, and three to the waist. So you would just go like that, three centimeters, three centimeters, three centimeters. And that gives you the waist, the waistline. Shoulders, could be more rounded shoulders like that. Hands and feet. And again, we're using the principle of um, approximately 7.5 or 8 head lengths to the human form. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7.5. 7.5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, point 5. So that's just a rough estimate. When you're doing figure work, you can always just use the head of the figure and then use that to um, scale your fi figure accordingly. So We're going to do, a, again, our beautiful, we'll do our pencil sketch of this really interesting figure. It's a lighthouse keeper. Um, let's see now, his, his head, I'm going to do the picture as close as I can. So his head is just about to the top of the picture. Like so. He's got a hat on. that and then his head is here he's got a beard so I'm just doing a basic oval shape for the head just an oval he he does have a hat on though so and there's a uh, emblem on his hat and then here his ears are a little bit below the rim of uh, the uh, band of the hat. So his ears are like so. He's got a mustache and beard. His eyes too are here. And I'm just gonna do careful uh, observation here. He's got a mustache and a beard. So, okay, he might be a little bit small as I'm drawing this, but I, I really, I'm just, I'm having a good time here. Okay, maybe the head I started a little too small, but not a big deal. I'm just going to go with it and have fun. Figures are very difficult, so don't ever get stressed over it. Just start one place, get your head started, your oval for your head. If you have a hat, you're better off because sometimes the hat can really help to make things go a little easier. And uh, he's got his two ears here. And uh, let me make his ears a little bigger. His ears kind of stick out a little bit more. So I'm going to try to stick true to form here. And he's got some shadows. The sunlight is coming from overhead. So we'll just put our light insignia up here. Light's coming from over top. It's probably middle of the day. Sunlight's directly overhead. Okay, so his neck is here. And then he's got a shirt, so I'm going to put a shirt. He's got a button shirt with some co with a collar, and uh, like so. His collar is here, and then his shoulders. His shoulders are more, so maybe his head is a little bit uh, 
Now we say to ourselves, how far is the shoulder out? Usually the male figure, the shoulder is usually one head length out from the neck. So if we take his head, head size and say, okay, wow, it works out just right. It's one head width, so the width of his head here, his, his face, is that black portion of the pencil. So I need to go one, for, I need to do one of these lengths here with the black tip of the pencil, and that's his shoulder, and we have it just about right. And the same thing here, from his neck out where that black is, and then we have it. Okay, now we're going to start going down. Now before we start going down into the arms and the hands, let's keep working close to the head here. We have the head, the neck. He is um, he has a button shirt. And now we're going to go down and I'm going to look at my drawing across from me and I'm going to measure and say, okay, how about his head? Okay, his head is one, two, three, three to his waist. So his waist is three head lengths down. So let's say his head length is approximately a little bit larger than the, than the white tip or the white stripe on my brush. So maybe his head length is about like that. So three down to his waist. One, chin, two, I'll put a mark here, two, and then another a little bit beyond, and we have three. So that's about his waist. <coughs> So we put a waist line there. He has his pants hiked up a little bit, but it looks like uh, it might be a little too much. Let me let me go down just a skosh more here. That might be better. A little bit more. That looks better. And uh, okay, so he's, his arms come down like so. So now we're going to come down and we're going to say, okay, we have some shadow and we have some wrinkles in his shirt here and some folds in the shirt and there's some dark shadows in here we're not going to worry too much we're going to try to get this pretty good okay and then we have his waist here and his waistband goes across a little bit on an angle down and then he's got some more folds in his shirt here and his shirt blouses out a little bit there and his shoulder comes out here and his arm comes out a little further and then I ask myself as I'm looking at the photograph how far is the cuff of his shirt from his belt, belt line, his waistline. So I go over here and I say, okay, the head length was um, the black tip of this. Okay, so over here, his head length is one black tip of the pencil. But down here on my paper, it's a little larger. So we said, you know, we have to account for that. So now we're going to go, how many head lengths over here? One, two... So I'm just looking across from me in the picture. One, two, three, four. Four head lengths to the cuff of his shirt. So I'm going to go here and say, okay, this is one head length here. One, two from the chin down, three, and four. And there we go. That's his cuff of his shirt. Okay, so that's the cuff of his shirt and his hand. And then we go in like this and we notice that his waist is kind of thin there and it, his pants kind of go out. He's got some, some trousers on here and then they go down. Then I come back up here. I want to get this line across like so. And then we're just going to keep doing the... Um, we're going to do the... Uh, details of the clothing here and we can transfer this over this cuff of a shirt we can transfer that over here so we don't have to re-measure everything okay and we say that's the other cuff here like that and then his hand comes over like this and it his shirt is a little short on the sleeves good for working when you're working a lot better to have shorter s sleeves and his thumb is there and this, his hand comes out here. His knuckles are straight across, a little bit below his thumb, like so. I start off with like a uh, somewhat of like a, a mittens or a pair of uh, mittens here. 
and then I can do more details later, but that's pretty good. So his hand is this way, and his pants come down here. They come down, then his knee's about here. Okay, let me take another quick look here, and I think, let's see. Let's take a look at the knee. Let's see how the knees are here. So let's find out the, the distance from the waist down to the knees. Okay, so the waist down to the knees is one, two, point five. Two point five head lengths to the to the knees from the waist down. One, two, three, and then half is point five. About here. So that's about his knee length there. And there's some and then he's got his pants are out this way and then over here. Okay, so he's standing there. He's got his we'll do the other hand. And again we'll do the kind of the mittens thing. Like that. Maybe we could make this more interesting. Let's Let's pretend he's holding on to something like maybe a bucket. Okay, so his thumb is there. Maybe he has a bucket. So I'm going to improv and make a bucket here. And a bucket of paint. Okay, so he's working here and uh, at the lighthouse. He's a lighthouse keeper, so he's got to make sure he's working and upkeeping the place. And So he's got his work clothes on. We've got everything pretty good. He was hand here. Other hand over here is good. We have his trousers fine, his shirt, collar. Okay, and then behind him there is a window or door, so I'm going to actually put that in just the way I see it in the photograph like that it's got a little bit of an angle to it then the other portion of the glass in the window is right alongside his hat like so maybe I will compensate for this even though I see that in the picture I'm gonna try to keep this straight so this might look a little more Keep that a little more straight. Okay, so that's going to be... I'm going to keep this kind of loose and free. No, no big deal here. We're not going to get too... We're not going to get too uh, worried about things. And this is the... Then there's some bushes and flowers over here. And the ground is over here. And this might be underneath the house here. And then over here is kind of bright. There's a bit of a, a line here where the uh, bottom of the house is. The lighthouse, there's a wood structured, basically like a small home that attaches to the lighthouse. So that's there, and there's some more plantings and things over here. We'll keep it loose and free looking. Some plants and flowers here. So that's basically it. That's the drawing. Um, and I always mention this. Um, we're going to take a break in just a second, but I always uh, mention to say this. Your drawings are going to look a little funny whenever you're doing figure work or basically anything. When you're doing pencil drawings, they do look at, they tend to look a little bit... I just would say, like, um, not that accurate sometimes. Like, they, they look like you have to fix things in it. But if you just stick to your game plan, 
Try to get the drawing the best you can the first time, like we did here, scaling everything like we did with the head, using the head as your scaling um, uh, measurement. So the head length here, and you just keep working back and forth. And if you want to use a ruler and measure things with centimeters or inches and half inches and quarter inches to get your um, scale, that's fine. And But you'll really find that uh, you are going to see a lot of times your drawings are going to look a little off, a little funny. Don't worry about it. And then a second thing I always say too is don't try to pencil in every detail because you're going to get a lot of details in with your painting when you're doing your painting uh, of the figure here and of this, this scene. So just trust in the fact that once you start painting and painting everything in, your lights, your shadows, and you start creating the painting portion, you're going to be able to capture a lot of uh, interesting details, and, and that's fine. You don't want to capture that many details with your drawing. You just want to get down the, the nuts and bolts of uh, the picture, the, the basic uh, structure of the drawing is what I'm saying, I'm trying to communicate. And uh, from that point, you'll have it. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to draw the eyes in, the eye sockets here. And that's all I need, really. We don't have to do a lot of details here. You can even erase a little bit of the facial features. Again, we're going to paint those in. Okay, we're going to see how it turns out. We're going to come right back in just a second, and we'll start painting this. We're going to have a great time. It's going to be a lot of fun. And again, just go for it. Have a good time with this type of a painting with figures. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, and figures are very, very challenging, so they're going to take you years to, to figure out how to correctly get your figures going, and so you just figure it like this. You just make a start of it. Every once in a while, you practice some figure work, and you just, each time you do it, you're going to get a little better at it, just a little bit, but it's going to always multiply, so your success at figures and portrait painting is always going to get a little better each time, and that's all you need is just that little bit each time. And then you'll just notice that after a time, everything compounds, just like, you know, you practice five minutes, you're five minutes better, you practice one hour, you're one hour better, and it's the same thing with figures. You're going to get better at your figure work uh, as you go. So every time you paint a figure, you're going to get a little better. Next time you'll come back and you'll do a little better job the next time because you'll be more familiar with scaling things and measuring and kind of like the basic uh, scale of the figure and the head lengths, you know. What, eventually automatically you're going to know okay like four head lengths is basically the seat or the bottom of the figure where they're um if they're seated the bottom of their pants where they sit that's going to be four head lengths up to the top of the head you'll kind of memorize that and say oh that's well that's half the figure four head lengths and then the other four head lengths is you know from the seat or the crotch down four is down four head lengths is the bottom of the feet so you kind of get used to all these little um uh, methods and techniques when you're doing uh, figure work. So just keep at it. Don't worry about it. Enjoy it. And we're going to come back and start painting. Okay, so we'll be right back. All right, we're getting back started again, everyone. So here we're just going to um, take a moment. We're going to clean up our palette a little bit. We had some paint from the last session where we were doing our last painting. So we just want to clean up our palette a little bit. So we just start off with a fresh, clean palette. Maybe we'll spritz a little bit of water on there. And I'm going to start out with, um, I have a number four Da Vinci Maestro um, travel brush, round brush, travel brush. And then I have a needlepoint brush. And I have a uh, other, we have a six, number six, um, sable round brush, number six, a number four, and then a needlepoint brush. We might use the needlepoint brush for fine, a uh, rigger brush for some fine tuning. So we're going to start out, we'll do the face, or the head first, the face, the facial features. Um, so what we're going to do is, um, we're going to go with some raw, raw umber here. And some cad red. Maybe over here we'll do our flesh tone. Some yellow ochre and cadmium red. 
yellow ochre, cadmium red, that's our flesh tone, and uh, a little bit of cerulean blue for shadow colors in the flesh tones. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to work our facial colors here now. What I want to do is I want to make sure I want to work around. Um, I'm going to stick with the flesh tones like so, the ears and the face. I'm going to go around though the mustache and beard a little bit. And a little bit there where the mouth is. And then the neck area, like so. Then a little bit of the blue to kind of transition into the beard area and underneath the hat and maybe a little more of that blue on the sides over here on the face and I do it everything pretty quick so I do that first quick wash like that and then you can also if you want to if you feel like you want to get some lights in there you can take a tissue fold it up like so quickly and you can also maybe the lights coming from this side of the picture so you can take that tissue and just blot up the that side of the picture like that, the face. See how I did that really quick? You can do that by not painting on this side of the face, but I think it looks better um, if we blot it up so we still leave some of that flesh tone in there. And then we also have the um, raw umber and uh, cerulean blue for this and some maybe French ultramarine blue. Some, so we're going to have some window back here. So I want to right away kind of start getting that in. So there's like a window behind him or a door with the glass. So I want to get that in like that and start getting some things around. And then the shadows are going to go right into his hat from that window area. So when I see some shadows going in, I'm going to do that. Rinse off my brush, dry my brush off a little bit on the tissue, and then I can slowly start moving that paint over into the hat. And I'm going to put some brown in there too, some raw umber. And then there's an emblem on his hat. And the hat sort of blends into the background a little bit there. And then there's a dark shadow there, like that. Okay, now that darker shadow with some blue that goes right into his face maybe it's almost as if his the side of this side of his face in shadow the lights coming from here this side of his face over here is sort of in shadow so we can just blend that in like so and there's some light on his and there's a shadow under here so I'm going to take some of that blue and then some more of that raw umber. So I'm going to try to start getting that dark shadow. There's a dark shadow under there. Raw umber and so I'm starting to see these dark shadows and I'm trying to get them in. This one's very dark actually. And then there's another one over here. Then it gets a little bit lighter but it's still there like that. So his head is casting a shadow on his shirt, like so. And then there's some other shadows for some of this. And then what we're doing here is we're just following our photograph. And you're going to paint from my finished painting. That's the main thing. You're going to want to 
paint from my finished painting. Instead of trying to struggle from a photograph, I think it's a lot harder to paint from a photograph. And I'm just going to get his eyes, eyes in there, like so. Just simple, simple shapes. He's got his nose, and that's shadows under his nose. There's a shadow under his. Okay. And always remember as well, please keep this in mind, when you're painting, you, once it dries it looks much better. So when, when you're painting it actually, it takes a while for everything to sort of mellow out, like the colors and the shadows and things, so don't get uh, nervous, just let it let the paint set up and kind of do its thing. And so far I think it looks pretty good. We're sort of working our way around the painting. So I'm just going to get some cerulean blue, French ultramarine blue. There's some more darks here, so I'm going to do some more darks there. French ultramarine blue, raw umber. So I get like a brownish, well, kind of like a goldish, gold and blue dark for the shadows over here on his shirt. I just try to get the shadow shapes as best I can. They're not going to be perfect every time, but... And this is kind of dark over here. So his shirt is dark over here. And his cuff of his shirt is dark there. And there's that shadow and then there's the light. And try to loosen up maybe a couple splashes here and there. And what else do we have here? And I rinse off my brush and dry a little bit of the um, water off the brush on a tissue just so I don't get too much water f flooding onto the paper. And this is raw umber. And the same thing over here, raw umber and French ultramarine blue. This is the shadow side over here. And I just keep bringing uh, French ultramarine blue and raw umber over here to the palette. That's going to kind of be my favorite mix I use right now on this painting. I think it's going to just be a good overall color to use, color mix. And then we're just going to go over here and then do some more uh, by his uh, waist. We have his color there, the color along his trousers, and then there's a shadow there. And then we rinse off the brush and maybe do some lighter wash. And there's some more. shadowing, so you just kind of try to get the shadows best you can. And uh, I'll try 
to stick close to the top of the figure here, like the, the waist area and so forth. Instead of working down into the legs, let me keep working over here and uh, trying to get that looking good. And then we have um, this portion here over this way is again more That blends right in with his shirt. So we would lose the edge over here. We call this lost and found edges. So if you see something that's the same exact tonal value, which means the dark and light of it, so his sleeve is the same dark the same dark tonal value as the trim here on the house behind him, that's where you, you let that um, you let that blend right in. Over here, incidentally, it's lighter, so we would leave this over here like so. Like that. Okay, so we're going to keep going here, and we're having a fun time. And again, I'm going to use my favorite two colors right now. We're going to be French Ultramarine Blue and Raw Umber, and I just keep mixing that around. And then I'm going to use that, that as my main mix for this painting. I'm not going to get too snazzy with too many colors because with figure painting I, I want to try to simplify things a little bit if I can and sort of make it easy on my, you know, on my way of thinking here is if I can just simplify it by using fewer colors and again this is a composition we're doing to practice our figure work. It's not a beautiful finished painting. I mean it could turn out to be a beautiful finished painting. Who knows? That's how watercolor is. Sometimes it turns out incredible, and then other times they just don't look good. So you, you just never worry. You just keep working at it, like we're doing here. I'm not an expert at figure work, but I'm trying to get better all the time. And so we can kind of see there's some other shadows over here, so I'll try to get those in. Just maybe little indications of uh, uh, wood, like wood, wood, barn wood and stuff on the, on the walls. And a couple splashes to give it some texture. And there's some shadow there along the bottom. Okay, you know what? Now is the perfect time to take a break. Now, we've done quite a bit of work. Um, good time to let this dry a little bit. Never hurts to let some of the paint dry as you're working. And um, we'll come back in just about 10, 15 minutes. We'll take a break. I'm going to have uh, some coffee and sit down and relax a little bit. I'm standing, of course, when I do my watercolor videos. So, um... That's what I'm going to do. Take a quick break, and then uh, we'll be right back, okay? And I always mention, if you like this video, please uh, subscribe. Consider subscribing. The button is right down below here on the screen. You'll see subscribe if you hit that. Um, you, it'll just alert you to when I make my videos. And when my new videos come out on YouTube, you'll just be alerted on your YouTube homepage that I've created a new video. And that's all subscribing really is, is it's just letting you know that we're creating new videos all the time and when they come out exactly at what time. And if you hit the notification bell, that actually notifies you um, with a small little notification on your YouTube channel. Your actually your YouTube homepage. So it's always a good thing to subscribe. This way you kind of know what we're doing. You can check out each new video that comes out. If you like something like this, great. You're going to work along with us. Hey, if you're not so interested, not a big deal. If you don't like figure work, maybe you just watch it, you know, to learn a little bit. Maybe you're going to do some figure work in the... Uh, next year or something, you'll make a goal. You're going to maybe try figure work in a year from now. Right now, you're going to focus on other stuff, maybe flowers and some seascapes and whatever else. That's fine. But I know some of you write me and tell me, please do more figure work. So that's why I want to always incorporate some new figure work into the um, my, my uh, videos here on, on YouTube. And so it's great to work on YouTube here. YouTube has incredible um, artists of all types, of all types of mediums, watercolor, acrylics, oil painting, you name it. 
as well as other arts and crafts and hobbies. But uh, here it's just all watercolor on my channel. So whenever you're thinking about watercolor painting, come on by, uh, enjoy. And uh, I'm so thankful you make uh, a, you leave comments in the comments section of my channel so I can chat with you. And, you know, if you have questions, I try to answer them, of course. But a lot of you are so kind and nice enough to leave me a quick thank you for the video. And I really appreciate that very much. It means a lot to me. And um, I'm happy, really tremendously happy to be here on YouTube painting and uh, doing tutorials and well I just hope we'll keep going forward and enjoying ourselves having a great time with watercolor that's what it's all about watercolor is your joy and your happiness in life our art our, our art you're the artist when you're an artist you'll just know that's your joy if there's other stresses in life yes those are always going to be there but when you're doing your artwork your, your watercolor painting your drawings your sketches that's your fun time when you can just forget about everything else hop in there and you start uh, focusing on that and you forget about everything else and you're just into your paintings and your drawings and so forth and that's what I try to do here and it's therapy for myself too because I uh, have the normal stresses everyone else has in life and uh, we all um, want to just sometimes get away and kind of have a little escape with watercolor so that's why we do it we <laughs> love that escape of getting into the artwork painting drawing enjoying it all and uh, so we'll get together all the time here once a week at least to do our paintings okay so I'll be right back enough chatting and um, I'll uh, be right back I'm just gonna let this dry a little bit and then we'll uh, start up again all right we're getting started back again here everybody so I usually cover my watercolor paints with some damp paper towels if I walk away for maybe an hour or two keeps them a little more moist and then when I come back I just spray a little bit of use a spritzer bottle and spray on a little bit of water and uh, I have a fresh clean water and we've been using the number four here to uh, travel the Vinci travel brush Kalinsky sable travel brush um, this is about a six by um, six by eight six by nine format we're using the uh, portrait format which is the our rectangle our our painting is upright in a vertical uh, format. So we're going to continue on here. We started, we got the face of our figure here. This is a lighthouse keeper. Um, we got the face in first, the hat, and then we started working the window or door that's behind him. It's actually a window and door. Maybe it's actually uh, some trim and a window or a door, some glass, but in any case we sometimes if you don't have all the information when you're working from a photograph or a picture or a watercolor painting you just you try to make your best estimate on what you think it is. It looks like it's actually a window here and then uh, some trim and there's some more uh, there's some more uh, there's some siding so it looks like some uh, clapboard siding here so this is and then by the time it gets down by this way it's a little bit this way that looks pretty good and we'll continue on here we're going to use some raw umber again we're using raw umber and uh, French ultramarine blue that gives us a nice warm and cool kind of feel and uh, we're going to do some darker darks over here and it's warm and cool everywhere and we do, we'll go down and do the pants here some darker darks over here so we'll get some more of that darker darks here and again we're going to use the same colors and some
darker darks across here. Like that. Then there's a shadow by his hand here. Like that. Maybe we'll put some flesh color in there, like that, and then some more. We'll get some flesh tones in there on his hands. And it's a little darker on the uh, more a darker tonal value over here on the left. And we're just going to continue on here. We have the bucket here. And we have some flowers and stuff over here. Do some finger painting. I don't want to get too much details here. And then his, uh, his, this over here is kind of more blue. And a little darker over here. Try to fo follow the, the shadows that I see. I'm just going to keep working the colors and there's some more bushes and plantings over here and flowers so we can make some flower shapes maybe here and there. Let's leave this pretty. Let's leave this pretty abstract, maybe. And the same thing over here. There's some flowers and plantings over here. We don't want to make it too much uh, detailed. We just want to Get a little bit of details in here, but not too much. And I'll blend that right into his pants there. And then I notice there's some... There's some dark darks over here. Along uh, the shadow under his hand there, like so. So there's a shadow along there. And there's a shadow under there, too. So 
so we try to try to blend in the uh, we try to blend in the the washes so things sort of mix and mingle and blend and again I do a little more just a little bit of tapping with some to make some interesting shapes with my uh, some finger painting like that we're doing some I'm going to try to carry this line through here, like that. And I think we're really, we're getting there. We have lots of good tonal values. We have... And we have a good deal of interesting colors. And then maybe we'll do a couple extra additional details here. Maybe we'll do a whole Maybe a name tag on there, something like that. Add a little couple details here and there when you want to, like for some interesting I think I made the hat too big, so I'm going to diminish that a little bit. That looks much better. So you can adjust your painting as you see fit. So if you think to yourself, I might have made the hat a little larger on this figure, that's not a problem. You just go in there and you add a little more wash on the top of the hat, like I just did. And then you have a, you can diminish the hat just a little bit. Much better. Looks good. And uh, what else do we have here? We have a little more of that blue, um, darker blue shadow here. That looks pretty good there. We have a little more darker shadows under there. So you can always add in some darker darks um, to kind of create the the shadow patterns and things like that a little more
And you can see I'm just doing a few more details here. A name tag maybe on there on the shirt. And uh, what else do we have here? Man, we have uh, that shadow over here. And there's some more. There's a little bit, there's a bush over here that seems to be a little bit higher up over here. So I'm gonna add the, just to add a little more interesting things to the picture, but I think we're wrapping up now. It looks good. Um, we have plenty of shadows and and there might be a little bit of a shadow underneath his right eye. I'm going to try to see if I could lift that up a little bit. That looks okay. There is a little bit of a darker shadow under his hat there. Like that. And there's a more darker shadow over here. I'll try to just add a little detail in there that kind of and in the bucket too. That looks pretty good. And what else can we do? Maybe a little bit of highlights. This always, we can do some highlights. Let's take some French ultramarine blue, raw umber. We'll use our needlepoint brush, our rigger brush here. Just to get a few more, uh, maybe some interesting this always looks good if you can do a couple. If we can add a little bit of this uh, fine details with this the rigger brush here. If we add these few, fine details with the branches and the twigs like so, that adds a lot, that adds a lot to the painting. It, it makes it look much more um, like we've added a lot of details to it and we've worked really, really hard at the details, but in actuality we just took our rigger brush, our needlepoint brush, and just added a little bit of extra detail. 
but the you know you're the artist you know when you are working on your painting how much effort you put into things and you might say to yourself wow I only did a few brush strokes to this but it looks like I've spent hours trying to figure out how to do these beautiful brush strokes and add these twigs and branches in there and that's all you just did a happy little branch or two here and there like that like that a couple down here and that's good that's a completed painting maybe just uh, if you want to you can add a little bit of white highlights essentially you can just um, clean a little spot off on your palette take a little bit of white titanium white titanium white with a little bit of yellow ochre you can even put a little bit in the top of the paint tube like that then you can take your tissue and dry off your brush a little bit and you can just do a few little maybe a couple little highlights here you can pick up a little bit of darks too if you're in a, a lighter area you can go with a little bit of darks I think we have a completed painting, so we are uh, going to call this a completed painting. What I'll do is, at the beginning of the video, you'll see this finished painting, and I'll peel off all the tape so it has more of a border around it. It looks a little more neater, uh, nice, clean, crisp border around this painting. And again, this is figure painting. You know, if you're just, uh, you've been painting a couple years or so, and you haven't dabbled into figure painting, just give it a go. Give it a try. The thing is, you know, it's, if it's familiar, it's going to be easier. So if you keep a little bit at a time, once in a while, you start doing a few figure paintings, a few portraits here and there. And I'm doing these all the time on my channel every once in a while, like every maybe once a month, I might do some figure painting or some, you know, portrait work or whatever. Give it a shot. Try it out. Um, maybe minimize it. Just maybe do the head and the uh, shoulders, something like that, you know. Work at it a little bit at a time, but you'll be surprised. The more you get familiar with your subject matter, whatever it is, seascapes, landscapes, cityscapes, you know, um, you know, uh, any kind of flowers, still life, figure painting, portraits, anything. If you just put a little bit of time in each day uh, or, you know, each week or even once a month, once a month, try some figure work or once every couple months in the beginning until you start to get the feel for it and then you know you do a little more but that's the main thing is just give it a try it's so rewarding doing figure work is is so much fun it's enjoyable and it is difficult but you'll you'll once you get used to it you're going to just really enjoy it tremendously trust me on that okay so uh until we uh, meet up again the next time i just hope you'll have uh great success and you'll have many uh great experiences with your watercolor and happy painting everybody and again, thanks so much for all your great comments on the uh, in the comments section. I appreciate all the kind words and kind compliments. Everybody, you're just uh, you know you treat me great here, and I'm just makes me more excited to keep painting on YouTube and keep creating more content, more tutorials, and so um, just uh, can't say enough about everyone for all the great uh, comments in the comments section and the thank yous and the um, beautiful uh, you know interesting comments that you make about the tutorials we do and asking questions and leaving comments and interesting insights into what we're doing here it all is good for everyone so everyone that's following in the comments section that's a great thing you'll learn a lot there's a lot of great watercolor artists here on our channel that paint along with us and they've made a lot of progress with their paintings and they put in a lot of great insights and great comments in the comments section so read through those comments maybe put in your own comments as well too as you uh, go through the um uh, each uh, of the videos and the comments in those videos. Okay. All right. So enough chatting here. We're going to get on to the um, next painting next week. And um, thanks again for stopping by and painting with us. And everybody happy painting. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.